G'day everyone, today I am teaching you part one of learning how to code Spike Prime version three using Python. Now Python is in early access in Spike Prime. So if you want to enable Python projects, then simply go into the general settings and flip the Python projects switch. A lot has changed for Python projects since uh, Lego Spike Prime's launch. So whether you are an experienced Python programmer or a completely new user, I hope that this video series will be helpful for for everybody. In part one, we'll explore how to move your basic robot around and break down when and how to use all the different movement functions. And by the end of the video, you'll be able to make your robot move in this figure eight pattern, just like this. And before you start the project, I highly recommend that you build the driving base two model in the app. So let's have a look at where that model is. If you go into uh, the app over here, you go into build on the side, and then you scroll down to driving base two. So you click on that, and then you build the driving base first, and then afterwards you build all of your tools and accessories. After you finish building, we go back into home, and then you click on new project, and then there'll be a Python button here. Make sure that you've enabled Python projects inside your general settings. And then we'll name it uh, my Python project one, click create, and you are ready to go. So first thing we are going to do is connect our, uh, our robot with your computer. So as long as your robot has been updated correctly and you have the latest version of Spike Prime uh, installed, then we are just going to click on connect up the top here and then click on this green because my button is green. And then you hit the uh, Bluetooth button on your hub. So over here, I click on this uh, Bluetooth button, I click on that, and then on the app, it'll pop up with your hub's name on the side here. We click on connect, and then your hub should now show a solid blue ring to indicate that it has connected to your computer. So that's really good so far. Go back into Spike, and then you will see that your hub is now successfully connected up the top here, uh, way out the side over there. You'll see that there is a tick, and then you'll see all of your ports uh, populated by the um, by the peripherals that you've connected. And then over here, we've got eight or nine lines of code that are, are already pre-written for you, okay? And what this does is it's going to write a high message on your robot. So once you click on this play button, you're going to see the words hi get written on your hub. So let's have a look at that. So I click on the play button on my app and it says hi. Okay, I'll do it one more time. Hi, okay, it's a little bit reflective over here, but you can definitely see that the hi message pops up. So back into the app, let's break down uh, what we are doing here. In the start, we are going from hub import light matrix. Uh, because Python does not know what Lego robot, not what Lego robotics is, it's like completely different companies, right? So what Lego has done is that they've created this hub library and this light matrix um, uh, library class uh, in order to teach Python how to uh, operate uh, the Lego robot, okay? So these libraries actually come from Lego, and uh, but it's written in Python syntax. And then we also import run loop, which is a, a very important library. We're gonna talk a little bit more about that towards the end of the video. And then over here, we have a definition, okay? This code uh, DEF means that we are defining a function, and the function is called main, down the bottom here, it says uh, await light matrix dot right high. That's what we saw before when we saw the light matrix light up with the high uh, words on the, on the screen. And then afterwards, we actually execute the code. We actually run the code. So here we're defining the code, but then at line eight is where we actually run the code. Okay, so we are going to get started with um, uh, with trying to move the robot. That's that's what we're here for, right? We want to move the robot, uh, and that is the most important thing. So 
let's start by importing some classes. First thing we're going to do, we're going to uh, import the port class. Okay, so we go import, oh, well, we go from hub import. And uh, when you see these um, code completion prompts up, uh, you don't have to type in the, the rest of your code. If you see what you want to type in this code completion, you just highlight it with the up and down arrows, and then you press enter, and that speeds up your coding. So from hub, import port. Next, we're going to go import uh, motor pair. Okay, you can see that code hinting was only recently reintroduced into Spike Prime, so that's that's already speeding us up. Um, so we are importing port, and we have imported motor pair. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to use our port methods and our motor pair methods uh, to uh, set our motor pair. Over here we go motor pair dot. Uh, what we're going to do first is unpair our ports. Um, this is because in Lego they recommend that we uh, unpair uh, your, your motor pairs before you pair them up later, just in case uh, there is an error or conflict from a, a previous uh, bit of code. So here we go unpair motor pair dot pair one. Okay, you can have up to three pairs of motors on your hub, uh, which is great. So you can have multiple uh, motor pairs uh, operating together. Okay, so here we go unpair motor pair one. Then we're going to go motor pair dot pair. Motor pair dot pair one. And then comma, we're going to go port C and port D. Port C, comma, port D, okay? So first we are unpairing motor pair one. Remember we can have up to three pairs of motors. And then we are setting pair one to be motor port C and motor port D. So motor port C is your left motor, motor port D is your right motor. So the first, first argument is your left motor, second argument is your right motor. Okay, so this is all just to define your motors. And when you see these um, uh, these little green hash um, symbols in front of a line of code, that basically means that that's a comment. So anything inside this uh, this green line is not actually going to be read in Python. All right, here we go. So now it's time to move the motor. We because we just defined the motor. Now we're going to actually uh, run the motor. So motor pair dot move and then we're going to say motor pair dot pair one in the argument so that's telling which motor pair to move but now we have to add some more arguments in to tell it um, uh, how where to steer and also how how quickly to move it so zero is going to be moving straight ahead or straight back comma and then you see, uh, you see up here we have uh, the pair, we got the steering, and now it is the velocity. Okay, so here we're going to go velocity equals, uh, and we're going to put in uh, say a thousand. Okay, so this is a one of the changes from uh, from Spike um, uh, from Python in Spike Prime beforehand. So in the past, our uh, the the velocity was set in in the terms of percentage, okay. But now it is in meters per second, okay. So uh, I know it's a little bit confusing, uh, but it also still maxes out. So a thousand tends to be uh, around about right for me to to max out the the motors. But you know you can experiment with this number. You can go higher and lower, uh, and uh, make the motors um, uh, move faster or slower as you see fit. Let's go back to our app. So we are moving at 1000. And then we are going to uh, await run loop dot sleep 2000. Okay, so what this does this uh, waits for two seconds. 
okay so this is 2000 milli um, uh, milliseconds uh, okay let's let's comment these so that we know exactly what it, we are doing this is just for everyone's benefit when when you're reading through the code and you're not sure what it's doing okay so this is write a message on the hub this one is uh, unpair the motors in case it conflicts with previous code uh, and then here we are creating a new pair of motors at pair one and then here we are move forward uh, and then we are waiting for two seconds but what we're going to, what's going to happen is if you run this code now it's going to play the message the high message on the hub and then it's going to start rolling the motors forward and then it's not going to stop because it's going to wait for two seconds but then afterwards uh there's no code so the motors will just uh go forever so let's test that out so it's playing the high message And then it's disconnected for me. I do it again. <coughs> so it plays the high message, and then the motors just spin. And they'll keep on spinning. Uh, forever until you turn off the the robot or until it runs out of battery so we got to tell the robot when to stop spinning its motors okay let's go back into the code here after we wait for two seconds we're going to stop the motor so here we just go motor pair dot uh, stop and then uh, we have to tell it which motor pair to uh, to stop and it's exactly the same as what we did before. So just motor pair dot pair one. Okay. All right. If you have uh, got this far and you've been trying to run your code, uh, sometimes it might uh, not run, and then you'll see some errors pop up in the console. Now the console is where you find out uh, what your error is. Uh, sometimes if it's uh, if you type something incorrectly or if you use a different type of bracket then you're going to see that error come up in the console so don't be afraid of these errors these are supposed to uh, help you improve your coding uh, and after a while you, you'll get used to them okay so now after we have run for two seconds we'll wait, wait for two seconds uh, this is going to stop the motor okay let's test it out Press, uh, press the play button, plays the high message, and then it rolls, and then after two seconds, it stops. Right, congratulations for making your robot move. Now we are going to see how we can shorten our code to make it a little bit more efficient. Let's go back into Spike, and you'll see here that we've broken down our code so that we are moving forward uh and then we wait for two seconds and then we're stopping the motors now this gives us a lot of fine control over the conditions in which your robot is moving now for example instead of waiting for two seconds uh in the future we can make it so that we wait for uh something to come towards the distance sensor for example or until we see a certain color on the color sensor or until we hit a certain button on the robot yeah, so this gives us a lot of control, but most of the time you probably want to simplify all these uh, into a smaller uh, bit of code. And we're going to try and do that now. So I'm going to teach you how to comment out uh, multiple lines of code at once. So here we're going to comment out these three lines, moving forward, wait for two seconds and stop the motors, okay? So we can use the, um, the hashtag method, the hash method, which is uh, called line commenting. Uh, but imagine if I had multiple lines. Imagine if I had 20 lines, right? And this is going to take ages. So uh, we can do something called a block comment by going triple 
quotation marks or triple apostrophes in front and behind your code. Okay, uh, when you do triple quotation marks in front and behind your code, uh, that will comment out everything in the middle and turn it all pink like this. Okay, uh, why am I not deleting the code? Well, it's because uh, we want to still keep the code that you've written, especially if it was working before, right? Uh, we don't want to completely delete all of your work um, uh, every time we write new code uh, because we work so hard to make sure it works. So let's make sure that you are commenting out your code that you don't want instead of deleting them. Uh, over here, now we're going to make our robot move for two seconds using one line of code. And this is a nice little function in Python, um, in Spike Prime. So all we have to do is we go uh, motor, uh, await, motor pair dot move for time. Okay, you can see that um, these these uh, code completion hints, uh, they're really handy because uh, not only do we have uh, move for time, we also have move tank, move uh, tank for degrees and move for degrees as well. And you can experiment with all of these uh, when you are uh, playing with your robot. So we're going to go move for time, we'll open our brackets, and then we're going to do the same thing. Look into code hinting you can see that first we have to do our uh, our motor pair, so we'll go motor pair dot pair one, and then we go comma for the next argument duration. Now this duration is how long we're going to move for, and this is duration is in milliseconds. So um, if I want to move in two seconds, then I go two thousand. Steering is zero again to make it go forward. And then uh, we can put in our uh, other other arguments as well. So here we go, velocity equals uh, 1,000, and uh, that's, that's going to be good for now. Okay, let's um, hit the play button, and then it's going to do exactly the same thing as we did before, but instead of using three lines, we're only using one line of code. So here, I've got to hit play, it says the high, and then it spins and then stops after two seconds. Okay, great. So now we are able to move our robot, but what are all these other arguments? So let's have a look at this. Uh, if I have my velocity at 1000 meters uh, per second, uh, I also can hit the comma and then see that after velocity, we have this stop method, okay? So we got stop, uh, and that's uh, equal to an integer, which defaults to motor break. So uh, there is a few different stopping modes in Spike Prime. Uh, so break means that when I stop, we apply the brakes onto the axle so that we try to stop it from rotating further. We can also do coast or, um, or hold as well. Okay, so stop, uh, break, uh, stop equals motor pair dot break. What that's going to do is that um, it makes the robot stop as quickly as possible uh, by applying the brakes. And that's what, what it's doing by default. But if I do coast, then it doesn't apply any brakes. It just uh, doesn't power the motors anymore and lets it roll to a, a gentle stop. So let's test that out and see what that looks like. So you see that the robot doesn't forcibly stop the motor uh, and it lets it coast uh, for a little bit. But uh, we can also use a hold mode uh, when we're stopping. So we go hold. And what that does is it forcibly uh, act or actively returns back to the position where we first ask it to stop. Right, finally, we are going to have a look at the acceleration uh, parameters here. Okay, so if you have a look at this uh, stop method, uh, after you press the comma, we're going to see that there's acceleration. Now, this is in meters uh, per second squared. So 1,000 meters per second squared is quite a fast acceleration. It's basically telling the robot to accelerate as quickly as possible to the speed that you want. Uh, so 1,000 meters squared. 
that's uh, that's really really far uh, per second squared so we're going to uh, turn that down a bit and then you're going to see that we're going to make a much more gentle increase in speed so we get acceleration equals uh, 500 okay and then let's test this out You see that uh, it does not uh, start uh, very fast, and it's really useful for if your robot uh, has a lot of weight on it, or if it's holding something that's fragile and you don't want to uh, have it jerk around too quickly and, and cause something to fall. Uh, this acceleration mode is really, really helpful for that. So let's put that all together and let's see if we can do a figure eight uh, motion. In case you didn't know, I have made hundreds of technology videos from Lego Robotics to VEX to Raspberry Pi and even 3D printing. And teaching technology is my full-time job. So if this video helped you out in any way, then please consider liking and subscribing to my channel. You can also join our Coding Essentials membership that gives an extra 269 hours worth of Scratch and Python coding classes by simply pressing the join button underneath. So uh, check out the description to find out more, but thank you so much for watching this channel. Uh, we are going to now have a look at how we can do this figure eight move. So in order to move in a figure eight, we're going to need to make the robot move uh, towards the left in an arc uh, for a full circle. And then after that, we're going to move towards the right in an arc. Uh, in a full circle. So uh, that is uh, what we're going to do. And we're basically going to use uh, this line over here. So we go, instead of moving for two seconds, we're going to make a move for two and a half seconds. And instead of spinning on the spot, we're going to make a gentle turn towards the left. Okay, so here we go minus 30. It's going to make it have a, a gentle arc towards the left for two and a half seconds. And we don't need this uh, slow acceleration. Let's make it uh, 1000. And also, instead of hold, we're just going to coast. This is going to make it so that our robot has a, a relatively smooth move. Uh, and we go all the way uh, across for the left. And then we're going to await for it to do the same thing in towards the right, okay? Now this should make it do a figure eight move. Let's check it out. And that's how you make your robot move. Now, if you have been using um, Python for Spike Prime in the past, you may be wondering what all this await and async business is doing here. And this is what I was talking about earlier. This is from the run loop library. This new method to have multiple uh, bits of code running concurrently with each other or at the same time, more or less. Uh, so here you'll notice that we put a weight in front of light matrix dot right. What that does, it means that we are waiting for light matrix uh, to finalize, to, to display its results before moving the routine over to the next line of code. Now, in the past, uh, this is pretty much the default state in Lego Robotics. You would have a line of code run and then wait for it to fully run and then go to the next one. Well, now we have to explicitly say to await, which means that we are waiting for this line to finish before moving on to the next one. Uh, so effectively, this means that we show the high message before we uh, do the next thing, which is to move the motor, right? But if I removed the await uh, keyword over here, then it's not going to wait for it to finish. It will write the high message at the same time as doing the next part of the code, which is to move the motor forward. Okay, so now that I've removed the await keyword, you're gonna see that the high message is going to be written at the same time as the robot doing its figure eight move.
I want to thank the sponsor of today's video, More Educational. Ever since Creator Academy started making Lego education videos, we have been greatly supported by the experts at More Educational. They are an authorized partner of Lego education with more than 25 years experience working with Lego education products. So if you're in Australia and you want to buy genuine Lego education products like the ones shown in this video, then make sure you check out the More Educational website. That's it from me today. Next lesson, we'll look at how to program spike prime sensors using Python, and I will see you then. Take care.